There are many things that we allow into our lives. They come in and out of our lives, day in and day out, and some of them find it very convenient to rob us. Marami mga magdanakaw sa kalya, sometimes nag-iingat tayo, may tayong jewelry, may tayong mga wristwatches, they rob us of material things. Isang papasok tayo sa mga bahay-bahay, ang dami mga bolt, ang dami mga pangsara, because we don't want to be robbed of our possessions. But there are many thieves that we allow into our lives. They are robbing us of things that are far more valuable than material objects because they rob us of happiness. Many people may be surrounded by things which are so secure, but if there's no happiness in people's lives, those things will be meaningless and empty. And so, we have been doing these studies not only to take a second look at these very common things, because you will find that many of them are very common. There's nothing new that we're discussing here, but we're just taking a closer, a second, more serious look into these themes that have become almost like permanent fixtures of our lives. Today we're going to talk about one major thief that robs us of a lot of joy and happiness, and that is insecurity. Kumisan may tao, ang hirap niyang pakisamahan. Sabi mo, sensya ka na dyan, insecure kasi yan eh. Kaya ganyan yan, insecure. There are some people that are too loud. Ang ingay, bakit ka nito to? Sabi mo, insecure lang yan, yaman na. Ride on ka na lang. And then there are people naman na very quiet. Talagang tahimik na tahimik to. Talagang tinatanong-tanong mo na ayaw sumagot. Laging nasa sulok, kain na na kayo, ayaw pa niya makijoin. Hindi siya joiner, laging na lang humihiwalay. Sabi ng iba, quiet yan kasi insecure eh. So, sa hindi na natin malaman, sino ba talaga insecure? Yung quiet, yung maingay. Sino yung insecure talaga sa buhay? Let's take a closer look at this matter and probably some of us will find that it is robbing us of happiness at varying degrees. Our Father in the heavens, we ask you to please descend upon us with your holy presence. Let your Holy Spirit infill our hearts. Father, as we quiet ourselves before you, sit on your throne of glory. Take your lectern as our teacher. Feed your people. Teach us, O Lord. We need your teaching. We need you, O God, in our lives, and we need you. We need you to protect us and to set us free from the hold of the thieves that rob us of happiness. Father, you created us to be happy. You created us so that we can reach our fullest potentials as persons. And yet there are many things that hinder our progress as individuals. There are many things in our lives that rob us of joy. Set us free, O Lord, through your word and through your truth as we bow before you and worship you, as we reverence your presence, as we implore your divine mercy, speak to us. Your people are ready to listen. In Christ's name we ask you. Amen. The dictionary defines insecurity or the insecure person as not confident or sure, uncertain, an insecure person is deficient in assurance, beset by fear and anxiety. So therefore, an insecure person becomes too loud sometimes to compensate. Para hindi mahalata na insecure, nag-iingay na lang. May mga tao na ang ingay-ingay, akala mo social butterfly, bubbling like boiling water, pero yun pala inside that person is also a scared rabbit. At ayaw lang niyang mahalata, kaya dinadaan na lang niya sa ingay. Sabi, an empty can strikes loud. Subukan niyo, maglaglag kayo ng latang walang laman. Di ba't maingay? Kasi may laman, tahimik. Uburiti yung sabihin ng aking English free teacher noon, pag sumasagot ka ng mali, there goes the empty can. Kasi sabihin niyo sagad, nakaka-embarrass. But the point is, uh, an insecure person may be too loud to compensate. Pagka yung bang sobrang maingay, yung sobrang sosyal, sobrang lahat ng tao, loud na loud, nagkukwento ang lakas-lakas, yung siguro to, ganito itong tao nito. At tulad ng nabanggit kanina, yung iba namang tao, to protect themselves from further embarrassment, to protect themselves from risks, then they do it the safer way, they just stay quiet. Sabi nga, few words, few mistakes, no words, no mistakes. 
So yung mga tao nag-iingat to, to the point that they are too quiet and too uh, withdrawn. Masyado silang nakakulong sa kanilang sarili. In both cases, the insecure person is always worried, always afraid. And because of that, the person is being robbed of getting the most out of this life. And the person is being robbed of the wonderful privilege of giving the most to life. Nadadaya tayo. What we give is what we get. And in this life, you keep only what you give away. So an insecure person that doesn't give so much dahil natatakot siya magkamali also doesn't get so much. And we are being robbed of a lot of facets of shape, color, rhythm of happiness. What are the common areas of insecurity in our lives? And what are the Lord's solutions? I don't propose new areas. These are old areas of our lives. Let's just take a closer look. There are several areas of our lives that insecurity as a robber, where insecurity as a robber operate. And one is in our physical world or in our bodies. In the physical world that concerns our bodies, there's a lot of insecurity. And one of those is that of insecurity about safety. Ang mga tao lagi natatakot. Natatakot na masnatsa, natatakot na ma-hold up, di ba? Natatakot tayo na mamatay, natatakot tayo na bigla na lang sabugan ng isang bomba na hindi naman para sa atin. And so there's a lot of fear. So sabi niyo ba, huwag ka nalang lumabas ngayon, huwag ka mag-shopping ngayon, may bomb threat. You're already immediately robbed of happiness if you're happy shopping. And many people are, including myself. It's nice to shop. And so, you don't want to go to public places and you forgo many social happinesses because we're afraid for our safety. We're insecure. Natatakot ko ako minsan, Naku, huwag kang bumili ng bahay dyan. Paliko yung kalyo. Pag hindi nakaliko yung truck, bubudulin ka. So, takot na takot ka ng ganyan. May kapit-bahay kami sa Bulacan, papalik ko na ganyan yung bahay niya, nilagyan niya ng pagkara, maraming mga buhos ng semento dahil baka nga naman may hindi makalikong sasakyan ay eh, natutulog siya sa kanya, bigla magtuloy. Huwag ka dyan sa nadadaanan ng mga aeroplano. Baka wala kang kamalay-malay, biglang mag-landing sa iyo ang aeroplano. Sa so, natatakot tao, baka ka mag-landing dito ang aeroplano. Marami tayong fear because of our bodies. We love this body so much. Kung hindi pa naman mahal yung katawan na yan, napakalaking industriya ng cosmetics. Sari-sari. Magpunagpunta tayo sa mga bathrooms ng ating mga kapatiran. Siguro parang buti ka sa dami ng mga, mga kung ano-anong produkto. Mga inilalagay sa mukha pag gabi. Merong pagkaaraw. Merong mga inipang ngipin. Merong mga pang pimples. May mga pang kung ano-ano hanggang cuticle remover. At ang mga produkto sa buhok, may shampoo, may conditioner, meron pang pang rinse, meron pang mga gel. O takot-takot, no? Sapagat mahal na mahal ang katawan na ito na immediately pagkamatay natin ay inuumpisa ng uurin. But then we love our bodies and we like to be safe. And our fear for our safety robs us of a lot of happiness. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? Anong solution? Proverbs 29 verse 25, the second part of it. Whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. In Proverbs 18.10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So, ang name pala ni Lord is a strong tower. Napakaganda pong isipin itong tower as a figure of speech. Sa pagkatong araw, ang mga safe places are towers whenever there are enemies that attack a village or a city. Punta ka agad sa tower. Kasi bukod sa fortified yon makapala mga pader, doon sa ibabaw may mga sundalo. At hindi makalapit ang mga kalaban. And so the name of the Lord is a strong power. It's fortified and the enemy cannot come close. And the righteous run to it and are safe. It's very important to note that the name of the Lord is likened to a tower. Kaya sinabi, whoever takes the name of the Lord by God in vain, him God will not forgive. What does it mean? What does it mean? This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever the name of the Lord is mentioned, it is not just a magic formula that we attach at the tail of our prayer and there goes. Sadaan, answer ng prayer. Kasi ito mga prayer ko Lord, hindi kalalagyan sa dulo. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Parang magic ikinakabit sa dulo. Yun na nga ang solusyon. No. 
Because to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and to be able to really pray in His name, one has to live according to His name and according to what the Lord's name stands for. Hindi ka pwedeng sabi na lang na sabi, this we pray in the name of Jesus, yun na yun. If you do not live a life that reflects the holiness, the righteousness, the majesty of that name, kahit sabi mo samtong beses, bale wala. To really use the name of the Lord is to invoke the power of the name only when you live according to what the name stands for. Kaya sabi, the name of the Lord is a strong power. So who is safe? A person that lives according to the righteousness, the teaching, the holiness, the statutes of the Lord Jesus Christ is always safe. Because he lives in the center of God's will and therefore is protected by the Lord. Romans 8.28, everything works together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. There's some kind of danger, but no, the Lord knows what happens to his saints. One of the titles that God has is Jehovah Nissi. My God is my banner. At sa gera, yung banner na yun stands for the authority of the king, the monarch, or the state. And if God is our banner, we stand in the shadow of His protection. At sinasabi din, ang isa pang title ng Panginoon, Jehovah Shama. God is there. God is my companion. God is everywhere. At itong sinasabi ko mga kapatid, kung meron sa inyong natatakot for your safety, may mga tao ayaw matulog, natatakot masunog. Baka magkasunog. Baka lumindol, baka bumaha, baka bumuka ang lupa, lunokin ako at sumara uli, wala malang makaalam na nandun pala ako. Di ba? Nakaka-insecure. Ang taming, na-insecure tayo about our bodies. No? So, do not forget, there is no crevice, there is no crack on earth that you can sick-sick yourself that God is not there. Because God is Jehovah Shammah. God is there. Sabi nung kanta, if I climb to the mountains, you are there. If I dive into the depths of the sea, you are there. Where can I go? Kung kahit kaya ako magpunta sa planetang Saturn, ando ka pa rin. And so God is Jehovah Nisi, God our banner. Jehovah Shama, God is there. Don't let fear for your physical safety rob you of happiness. Ang proteksyon ng Kristiyano na nabubuhay sa turo ni Kristo ay problema ng Diyos. Hindi mo problema ang iyong proteksyon. Problema yan ng Diyos. At kung Diyos ang namroblema, solve na kaya? Solve na kaya? Yes, amen. Kaya tayo safe. Ngayon, kung nabubuhay ka outside of God's will, nervyusin ka. Yan talaga. Because you are, you cannot run to the power which is the name of the Lord. How can you invoke the name of the Lord if you are living against what that name stands for? So, anong pwede natin gawin? Anong business natin? Live! A righteous Christian life and let God do the worrying for everything else. He that fears God has nothing else to fear. But he who does not fear God has everything to fear, including God. Walang nakakaagaw sa kamay ng Panginoon kung sino ang kanyang hawak. And so we are secure. There's another area of insecurity that concerns our body. And that's not only safety, but also health. Kaya ko takot-takot na yung mga health insurances, which is not bad. We don't condemn that. People have right to be afraid also. But people are always afraid for their health. Natatakot na makagat ng tse-tse fly. Natatakot na magkaroon ng AIDS. Natatakot na magkaroon ng herpes. Di ba? Natatakot tayong maha- mahawa sa buni at an-an ng katabi, lalo ko nasa braso, kakiskisan nyo pa ng konti. Tingin na agad kayo sa katambi nyo, no? Oh. Natatakot tayong mahawa. Natatakot tayo ay magkasakit. Natatakot tayo kaya yung mga iba. Kahit mahal ang karne, o oh, itapon na yung taba, masama. Di ba? Ayaw natin kainin. Ayaw kumain ng mga kung ano-ano. Puro health conscious. And it robs us of a lot of happiness. But it's good to be health conscious. But there's a very thin line between health consciousness and paranoia. The people are always afraid to catch some dreaded disease. How can we be safe? Deuteronomy 32.39 says, 
See now that I myself am he. And this is the Lord speaking. There is no God besides me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal. No one can deliver out of my hand. Napakagandang verse. Napakasarap na verse kung tayo nabubuhay according to God's will at nakakatakot na verse. Kung tayo naman ay nabubuhay ng labag sa kanyang will dahil sabi niya, No one can deliver out of my hand. Pag hawa ko, walang pwedeng kumuha. At kung tayo hinawakan para i-protect ang ating health, napakasarap. Pero pag hinawakan tayo para tayo siklot-siklotin at tayo ay paluin because of our own sins, napakahabdi. Because no one can deliver us out of God's hand. Walang pwedeng padrino na lumapit sa Diyos kapag tayo ay sinachastise. God's justice will be consumed to the end until God's justice is satisfied. And so talking about hell, one of the titles of the Lord na paborito ng napakarami sa atin, Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. There is nothing impossible with God. Do you believe that God still makes miracle today? Yes, He still creates miracles. He still can miraculously heal. The Lord can still miraculously save us out of dreaded diseases. God is in control. Sabi niya, I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal. Let's not be too conscious and too worried about our health. Let's leave it up to the name of the Lord. While we do what is humanly possible to remain healthy and to be healthy. Remember, God is Jehovah Rapha. If you have any disease or you're afraid of catching one, but sinabi mo sa pamilya ko, lahat namatay talaga, heart attack, will I keep the family tradition? Nag-iisip ka pang ganyan. Naku, lahat ng mga lola ko nagkaroon ng mga diabetes, kung ano-ano. Eczema. Merong namatay sa grabing case ng buni. Paano kaya ako? Mahahawa kaya ako sa aking mga ninuno? And so, hindi ka afraid. God is Jehovah Rapha. Do not forget this. Do not be too over-afraid about these things. And then there's another area of fear that concerns our body. Nasa body pa lang tayo. And that is provisions. Naku, pambihira naman, sabi niya. Kung nung araw ang pamilya ko nakakakain ng dalawang kilong baka sa isang buwan, ngayon tatlong guhit na lang. Paano kaya ito kung tumaas pa ang mga halaga? Lahat lumalaki ang halaga, pero ang sweldo, sabi nila. And so, paano kami? Paano kami mabubuhay? Paano kung magpapalaki nito mga anak ko na to? Meron nung mga estudyante, naku, paano kaya ako makakatapos ng college? Ganun lang ang sweldo ng tatay ko, ganun lang sweldo ng nanay ko. Napupunta lahat sa babaya rin. O, paano kaya kami magsusurvive? Natatakot tayo for our provision. The Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will meet all your needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. Sinabi ba dito 85% of our needs? Sabi, all your needs. But brothers and sisters, there is a line that divides needs from wants. Kaya kailangan, yung mga needs lang, ha? needs lang ay pinangako. Hindi lahat ng ating mga kapritsyos. Yung needs, ipinangako ni Lord, I will meet all your needs. And God, of course, another title that we love, Jehovah Jireh, God who provides. God provides all our needs. Do you believe this, Christians? Yes, God can meet all our needs. Alam niyo, isa sa mga paborito kong Old Testament stories ay yung widow na hindi naubusan ng laman yung kanyang banga. Wala nang pagkain sa buong land, taggutom na, taghirap, dumating sa kanya si propeta, sabi, pakanin mo ko. Ito naman si babae, eh, may isa siyang anak, meron siyang konting harina, konting langis. Sabi niya, mamasahin ko to, kakainin namin eh. Sapagkat ang balak ng widow, kakainin na lang nila yon yung huling meal nila, tapos magigiga na lang sila, iintayin na lang sila yung mamatay. Hindi po ako nagtataka dito, alam nyo, ang inyong lingkod ay nakapagpasikot-sikot sa ano, itong Sinai Desert. At I have never seen such poverty na kahit sabihin nyo, kumain ka ng damo. Walang damo. Wala kayong makakain na damo. Kahit na sabihin nyo pa, kunwari, salad. Wala. Wala talaga. Sabihin nyo, wala na tayong pamprito ng isda, wala na tayong gas, kainin na lang hilaw. Sabihin nyo, sashimi. Wala rin, maski hilaw. Nothing. 
At siguro ganun ang kalagayan nila. Talagang walang makuha sa ito na lahat. Pagkakain ko nito, aantay na lang kaming kamatayan. Eto ngayon, dumating pa si propeta. Sabi, pakainin mo naman ako, gutom na ako eh. Ang babaeng ito nakarecognize ng sugo ng Diyos. Minasa niya ang kanyang natirang konting harina, nilagyan ng konting oil, binake. At itinakain willingly sa kanyang panauhin. Nagtaka siya kinabukasan, pagtingin niya doon sa loob ng banga niya, Bo? Ang tingin ko, naubos ko na ito kahapon eh. Meron pa palang natira dito. Nagluto na naman siya. Kinabukasan, sabi niya, natin niya nga ulit. Meron na naman. At alam niyo, to make a long story short, taon ang binilang, tuwing umaga, may hari na doon at may oil. Kumakain lagi. The Lord knows how to provide. Sometimes it escapes our reason. It is beyond our logic. But don't forget this, Christian. Your finite mind cannot totally comprehend an infinite God. Walang wala sa inaha- iniisip natin. Katulad ng mga Israelita, dalawang milyon, more or less, na tao dinala ni Lord into the desert under the leadership of Moses. Man, pakin yung magpakain ng dalawang milyon tao? If you are flirting with this thief, fear for our body, for safety, for uh, health, and for provision, remember, God cares, and God can supply, and God can protect. Then there are people that are insecure in another area of their lives, not the body, but the mind. People are sometimes insecure about their knowledge. Natatakot sapagkat hindi alam ko ano ang capital of Mindoro Oriental. Maka ako matanong. Subukan ninyo mag-invite. Halika sa Bible study, baka ako tanongin to, na? Uupo lang ako. Hindi ako sasagot, ha? Hindi ako marunong magbuklat niyan. Baka mamaya tatanong-tanongin ako. Natatakot ang mga tao because they are insecure about their knowledge. And so we become very insecure. There are many things we don't know. Naranasan niyo na bang pumasok sa isang banyong sa mga? Ano ko kaya bubuksan itong mga gripo na to? <laughs> oh. O kaya sa kotse na nakikipagtunggali ka doon sa pinto, ano, hindi mo mabuksan. Sabi naman ng click, nabuksan na. So, nakakahiya naman ako. Para yun lang. O kaya ay eh, haharap tayo sa isang kainan. Taklo ang kutsara. Taklong baso, ano kaya ako unahin ko dito? Di ba? Kaya sabi mo, pag next time na-invite ka, nasakit ang ulo ko eh. Ayaw na lang natin kumain kasi nakaka-insecure. Di ba? And so we become very insecure about what we don't know. About facts, about figures. Then there are people that are so insecure with their grammar. Ayokong kabarkada yung inglesera. Baka ako mapasubo dyan. No? So ayaw na lang natin na makibarkada. Natataka pa yung grammar natin. Baka mali. Or we are afraid that we don't know the social rules. How to go about it. Hala nyo ba maraming mga ninong at ninang? sa mga kasal, kinukuha natin dahil mahalaga sila sa ating buhay. Pero hindi sila masyadong sanay sa mga social uh, functions. Umiiwas. Huwag na, huwag na ako. Alam niyang iniiwasan lang dahil upo sa presidential table. At napakagaling natin umimbento ng parusa. Isang parusa na paupuin ka sa presidential table, wala ka namang kaharap kundi napakaraming taong gutom na gutom na kayo palagang sineserban. Kasi hindi mo maalaman kung paano ka kakain, nahihiya ka, video ka para ganyan. And so, Handa ko yung mga tao na, huwag na lang, huwag na lang akong minang. Kuha na lang ako. Ako na lang sa kitchen. Because we become insecure. And then there are, of course, a lot of students. Pag dumating na yung teacher, darabala na yung class record, at nag-umpisa na magtanong, pwede ko umawala doon sa silya. Kung pwede maging invisible. Alam nyo, nung araw, may mga teachers kami, pagpasok, high school teachers, papatayuin ka. Eduardo, tayo ka naman. Tell the class what you have read for the week. Patay. Paano ito? Kinakabahan na yung iba. No? Lalo yung hindi nagbasa. You know, when students are not ready, laging may nervyos. And when people go to work, halimbawa, napasok lang sa trabaho dahil pamangkin ng kapitbahay ng isang manager. Medyo malakas. Eto na ngayon. Kinakabahan na. Pagka nandiyan yung mga supervisors, hindi makapagtrabaho. We have a lot of uh, insecurities because of our mind or the limitations of our mind because of the limitations of our knowledge. What can we do? What can we do to solve all of this? Sabi sa James 1.5, If any one of you lacks wisdom, 
He should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Kung sinasabi natin, hindi naman ako matalino eh. Kulang naman ang alam ko. Ask God. Do you believe that God answers? Yes. Sinungaling ba ang Bible? No. If any one of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. Pag may taong wala pa rin wisdom, kasalanan mo na yan, sinabi humingi ka na lang eh. Diba? And hindi lang nagbibigay si Lord. He gives generously to all. To somebody ba? To only to the holy, only to the good, but to all. Without finding fault. Wala nang sisihan. Wala nang tanungan. Walang busisian. Bibigyan ka kung humihingi ka sa Panginoon ng wisdom. And it will be given according to James 1.5. However, you've got to do what is humanly possible to do. Matthew 7 verses 7 to 8. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Remember what James 2.17 says, Faith without works is dead. Although it pertains more to salvation, but let us apply it in the area of study that we are on. Hindi rin pwedeng ask lang lang ng ask without deserving it in a way of doing what is humanly possible. And so, stop being insecure about your grammar. Pick up a book, kahit second hand. Bumili ka dyan sa Claro Emerecto ang dami-dami and review your grammar. Ang simple-simple lang ng mga rules ng subject predicate, ng past, present, at future. Huwag nyo nang intindihin yung introductory participial phrase at nakakalagnat yun. Tama na yung past, present, at future, subject, at predicate. Okay na yun. Let's have basic grammar that is strong. Konting aral-aral lang naman ng mga etiquette books. Malalaman na natin what to do and what not to do at dinners, at banquets, and at uh, functions. And so we don't have to live in the shadow of that insecurity forever. May mga tao na meet mo five years ago, ayaw kong sumama dyan kasi hindi ko alam eh. Na meet mo three years ago, ayaw pa rin sumama, hindi alam. Hanggang ngayon, ayaw pa rin sumama, hindi pa rin alam. Paano? Hindi naman inaalam. Hindi tayo pwedeng makataka sa ating mga insecurities until we face them and do what we can. For anything to be changed, you've got to face it first. Kailangan harapin natin. And it's not too late. It's not too late to go back to school. It's not too late to attend special seminars. It's not too late to do self-study para lang tayo makalaya sa mga insecurities. Work it out and God will bless you. So we're insecure about our mind. However, there are people that are insecure about their hearts. Body, mind, heart naman ngayon. Lumalalim ng konti ang ating usapan. There are people that are so insecure about love. Hindi nila tiya kung mahal sila ng magulang nila o hindi. Nung maliit sila, laging kinukurot-kurot. At sabi pa ng ate niya, alam mo nung minsan may baha, may lumulot ang nakahon ng gatas, doon ako sa namin, nandun ka sa loob. Pinulot ka lang namin, akala mo ba? Meron sabi, alam mo ba, tangay-tangay ka lang ng aso, dinala ka dito, inalagaan ka namin. And so, hanggang ngayon ay insecure tayo, mahal kaya talaga ako, bakit ako ginanon? Bakit lagi na lang ako doon natutulog sa matigas? Yung ate ko, laging parang prinsesa, may lace pa yung kumot. Ang kumot ko may lace, kuto. <laughs> Bakit ganito? Kawawa naman ako. Inapi-api ako ng mga brothers and sisters ko, binatok-batukan ako. Ginito-ginito ako na lamang. Mga relatives namin, mga tita ko, hindi ako paborito. Lagi na lang naaalala, birthday ng kapatid ko, ako hindi. Sa kabarkada na lang namin, sa mga friends na lang namin, lagi akong inuutos-utusan. Lagi na lamang ako ang naiiwan-iwanan. Pag may lakaran, wala nang upuan, ako nakatayo. Bakit ganun? There are people that are insecure about their sweetheart. Si bang, mahal kaya niya talaga ako. He loves me? He loves me not. He loves me not. Hindi ka tao to. Papalitan na naman. There are people that are insecure with their own spouses. Mahal kaya niya ako o nanay niya? Bakit ganun? Nanay niya lagi ang kinakampihan niya. Mga kapatid niya, binibigyan niya ng lihim. Sino kaya talagang mahal ng asawa ko? Ako o kamag-anak niya? Di ba may mga ganyan tayong insecurities? And there are parents that are insecure about their children. Magtanda ko kaya ay haalagaan ako ng batang ito. 
Eh, malakas pa ako eh. Ako eh, itinutulak-tulak na nito. Ano pa ko ako eh, humina na? Ano kaya? Mahal kaya niya ako? Marami, di ba? Marami tayong insecurity sa bad love. Nag-iisip tayo, in talaga kaya ako? Kung tigil ako kaya ang paglilibre, mai-invite pa kaya ako? Kung hindi na kaya ako nagpapaalila sa mga kaibigan ko na to eh, mahal pa rin kaya nila ako? Siguro lahat tayo nagkakaroon ng ganyan insecurities. Nagkakaroon tayo ng doubt kung talagang welcome tayo, kung talagang mahal tayo. Kahit nagalo kayo na nagalo ng santol, wala pa rin, hindi nag, walang effect, parang hindi tayo paborito, and yet, you nurse grudges. May mga bata, maliliit pa lang, pag laki ko, lagot ka sa akin. Ano sabi mo? Wala po. Lagot ka talaga sa akin. Naghihintay lang na tumanda sila. Meron ba tayong ganun hatred? Hatred for people that probably shortchanged us in the past? Forgive those people. Let the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cover that deficient past. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cover that. Lahat tayo, pag tinignan natin ating past, may mga kulang-kulang. Kumbaga sa mga kotse, kupi-kupi. Pero pwede ang masilyahin ng Diyos eh. Pwede niyang ayusin. Let the Lord cover the deficient past of our lives. Sabi nga nung kanta, Christ is the answer to all my longings. And it is very true. Christ is the answer to all our needs. Sabi sa John 10.10, 10, ang paborito nating verse sa series na ito, sabi ni Lord, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And so kahit sa ating deficient past, pwede, pwede niyang takpan. If the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins, including the sins of the past, then His love can cover up for all the love that was lost or not experienced in the past. Do you honestly believe that, Christian? Yes, kahit anong kulang sa pagmamahal ng mga magulang natin noon, nandiyan naman ang pagmamahal ng magulang natin na nandoon sa langit. Kahit nagkulang ang pagmamahal ng ating mga ama sa atin, nandiyan ang ating ama sa langit na laging nagmamahal na hindi nagkukulang kahit kailan. Kaya nung sabi ng Ephesians 3.16, I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints. Power what? To grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Napakagandang verse. Sabi niya, bigyan sana tayo ng power ni Lord at gusto kong magbigyan kayo ni Lord ng power para maintindihan niyo kung gano'ng ka-wide, kahaba, kataas, kalalim ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Isang pag-ibig na hindi kayang maintindihan ng kahit anong tarunungan. And so, Stop fretting about your past. Stop fretting about all the loves that are lost. And stop thinking about what did not happen. And start to think about what God has already done for us. And what God still does. And what God can still do. It will cooperate with Him. And then, the last area that we like to discuss, last area of uh, insecurity, is done in the spiritual realm. Meron tayo sa body, sa mind, sa heart. Ngayon sa spirit. Many of us are very spiritually insecure. And what is it all about? Probably not many in this room, but many in this world. People are insecure about their salvation. Sabi niya, ay kung mamatay kaya tayo, huy, huwag naman, knock on wood, huwag don't talk about it, ito naman, nakakatakot. Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, pambihira, nakakatakot naman yung topic mo. Bakit natatakot mamata? Eh, to die is game. Uy, ano ka ba? Nag-Bible study ka lang, naging to die is game. You know, people are afraid of death. Marami rin ko yun, takot din. Diba? Takot ako mamatay. Parang gusto ko pa mabuhay. Gusto ko pa bag to live is Christ. Pero kung gusto ni Lord bag to die is game, hindi eh, pahala siya, no? Pero Lord, to live is Christ muna. No? Why? Because many people... Especially those that are not in the Lord don't know where they're going. Takot mamatay. Nagsusot ng itim kasi hindi malaman kung saan nagpunta yung namatay. Wrapped in mystery. 
wrapped in darkness. Kaya talagang nakaka-insecure ang kamatayan. Pero kung minsan, hindi dapat yan. At madalas hindi dapat yan. In fact, hindi yan dapat. Dahil sabi sa John 1.12, Yet to all who received Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave their right to become children of God. People don't have to be afraid of death if only they accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. If we believed in His name, not only the name Jesus, but what the name stands for. The entire person, the entire teaching, the entire work of Jesus Christ. And if a person believes that and accepts in his heart Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, there should be no fear or insecurity about salvation. That is the solution. To accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. And then there are people that are saved, have accepted Jesus Christ, but still are afraid. Afraid that in spite of the fact that they are born again Christians, that they have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, they might still go to hell because they committed some sins after they became born again. John 5.24 is very clear. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. A person that accepts Jesus as Savior and Lord will never be condemned, though he may. He may commit sins after salvation. What happens if Christians commit sins after salvation? First John 1 John 1.9 We confess and charge it to the cross. What happens if a Christian persists in living in sin? Well, he loses his joy of salvation, but he doesn't lose his salvation. Sabi ni David, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Hindi niya sinabing, restore to me my salvation. Alam naman niyang hindi nawala eh. Nakasala siya, natanggal yung joy. At alam niyo to, mga kapatid, tayo mga Christian, pag nagkakasala, ang puso mo parang nilamukot na papel. Hindi ba? Alam na alam mo, grieve na grieve ka. Kaya alam na alam mong iba ka na eh. Dati nga, pag nagkasala ka, eh, natutuwa ka pa. Kita mo na, kaya ko. Ngayon, pag nagawa mo, there's something deep inside it that is so green. Natutuyo. Para tayong dry. Kaya kitang-kita mo yung isang Christian na napakaraming burden, especially burden of guilt. Walang kabuhay-buhay. Tingnan nyo nga mga mukha ng katabi nyo, please. Tingnan nyo kung may buhay. Naku, ngiti ano naman kayo. May bigla pag naglagay ng blush on. Para buhay na buhay. Dapat buhay. Alam natin kung saan tayo pupunta. Bakit o di ba? But sin in our lives, take away that joy. But salvation is never taken away. John 5.24 A Christian will not be condemned. Bakit hindi ka na makokondem? Why? Why will the presence of sin bring you to hell? Did the absence of sin bring you to salvation? In both cases, actual sin is irrelevant. The presence of sin will not take you to hell if you're born again Christian because the absence of sin did not bring you to salvation. You were not required to be sinless. You were required to have faith in the Lord and charge to Him our sins. Eh, anong nangyayari? Sabi ni Baba, Siyempre, Christ saved you once and then dapat mabuhay ka ng holy to maintain your salvation. Aba, co-savior ka na niyan. Biro mo, the Lord saved you once, minsan lang, at ikaw araw-araw, you maintain your salvation big time. So, pag pumasok ka ngayon sa heaven, halimbawa at cartoons, at tinanong ka ng gatekeeper, give me one good reason why I should let you in. Sabi mo, well, Jesus saved me one day. And every day after that, I maintain my salvation through holiness. Di ba? E di hindi na sana kumpleto yung trabaho niya. But then, don't take this lightly, Christian. Because a believer that commits sin and lives in sin ay papaluin ng Diyos. Paparusahan ka, pero dito lang sa lupa. Pag namatay ka, yung soul mo, bigla na rin kasama ni Lord. Dahil everything else is charged to the cross. The Lord paid with His life for our eternal salvation not for salvation from our own sins while on earth. Kaya ang born again Christian na nagkakasala, nagbabayad dito sa lupa. Pero pag namatay siya, kaya ang kanya, to die is gain. Pero hindi tayo exempted from suffering dito sa mundo. Kaya may born again Christian na may cancer, mayroong Buddhist na may cancer, may Catholic na may cancer, di ba? may Muslim na may cancer. 
Merong katolikong mahirap, may born again na mahirap, merong protestanting mahirap, merong buddhist na mahirap. Pare-pareho lang. Sabi na iba, hmm, nakapag-born again, born again pa ako, hindi naman pala mababayaran lahat ng utang ko, ganun din. May utang ako ng katoliko, may utang ako ng born again, pareho lang. Hindi pareho kapatid, sapagkat pag namatay ka, at yung hindi born again, ibang iba ang pupuntahan ninyo. Hindi pareho yan. On the surface, it may look na pareho. Dumisan pa nga, sometimes it becomes worse. Kasi minsan yung nakamag-anak mo, ayan, born again, born again ka pa, minalas tuloy tayo, mula nung na born again ka, natanggal ka sa trabaho, walang pang trabaho, mahirap tayo. Sabi naman niya, eh bakit lahat ko ba na hindi born again, may trabaho? Di ba, meron din naman hindi born again, wala din trabaho, ba't ang sinisisi niyo yung pagka-born again ko? Ayan, mula nung na born again ka, namatayan ka ng anak. May ganun eh, no? Kaya bakit po ba lahat ng hindi born again, hindi ba namamatay ng anak? Hindi ba namamatayan din? Huwag yung blame ng pagiging born again po. It is irrelevant. It has nothing to do with it. Why? Ang sabi ng Ecclesiastes, because time and chance happens to all. Ang sabi ni Lord, I send rain both on the just and the unjust, and the sun shines both on the wicked and the righteous. So parang pare-pareho, pero tubukan yung mamatay at makikita niyo yung iba. <laughs> Ayaw niyo mo nang subukan. Oh. Saka na, magtuloy describe muna tayo. But, it is true. And so, Christian, be assured of your salvation. Not once, not for one minute, not for one second. Do not ever fear going to hell. If you really accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, as Lord, and you believe in His name, secure. Ko ang ba namang Kristiyano, matapos maborn again at nagkasala, pupunta palagi sa hell? Paano sasabihin ni Lord na peace be with you? Sabi niya, my peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. I do not give like the world gives. Tapos yung pala, pagkakasala ka ulit, hell ka na naman. E di, hindi ka pwede magka-peace. The mere fact that our, secure, our salvation is secure is the foundation of that peace. And so have peace, Christian. Yung iba naman natatakot, katali ba mga Christian sa tribulation? Yung bang tipong ang Antichrist ay susulpot at magrurule over the world at mukhang kung ano-ano mga mangyayari dito, bubuka ang lupa, may lalabas ng mga winged creatures na mga gagat ng mga tao. Kasali ba ang Christian? We definitely and categorically say no. Why? Because tribulation is judgment. And the church of the Lord will no longer be judged. Why? Because the Lord God put on Jesus Christ the iniquity of us all. Bayad na lahat. Bakit pa tayo magbabayad uli? E di double indemnity. E di double jeopardy. You don't pay when it's already paid for. The church will not be here during the tribulation because the church is exempt. Not because we are holy, but because the blood of Christ exempts us. Charged to the cross. Beautiful. The doctrine of salvation of Jesus Christ is so beautiful, so profound, and yet it is so simple. Do not fear. Have peace. Remember, Jehovah Shalom. God, our peace. And so what are the other solutions to all of this insecurity? Of course, as we have already mentioned, let me just say it again. Do what is humanly possible to get out of that insecurity, to solve that deficiency, and then leave the rest to the Lord. No, ang Panginoon ay magmi-miracle. He was going to turn water into wine. Anong kanyang utos sa mga tao doon? Fill the jars with water. At nung mapuno na ng tubig, ginawa niyang wine. And so we, Christians, may mga insecurities tayo. We like wine. First, fill your jars with water. Do what is humanly possible. Eh bakit naman lalagyan ng Panginoon yun ng water? Eh kaya naman umigib ng mga tao, di ba? Ngayon, nung nagawa na nila yung parte nila, nakaigib na sila, nalagyan na nila ng tubig, kaya ba nilang gawing wine yon? No. Ginawa ni Lord na wine. Come to terms with yourself. Accept yourself. Including your imperfections that cannot be changed. Mga bakokam na ang lalalim, talagang tinanggihan ni Dr. Garma. Hindi niya kayang ni Dr. Mata ay talagang tinanggihan. Tanggapin niyo na lang and accept it as your charm. Marami mga bagay sa ating personality, hindi natin kayang baguhin. Kahit anong gawin natin. And so accept it and say, Lord, thank you. You have made me unique. 
You have made me charming. There are many things. Alam niyo mga kapatid, as soon as we accept ourselves, we will be at peace with the world. Kailangan tanggapin natin. Don't try to be what you are not and don't stand taller than what you really are. Accept yourself. You cannot expect the world to accept you if you have not accepted yourself. So tatanggapin natin ang ating mga limitations, mga hindi natin kayang gawin, talagang doon lang tayo. And then, highlight your strength. Yung lalong i-emphasize yung mga strong points, yung mga blessings ni Lord. And let me tell you this, appreciate yourself. Kayo ba ay nakakapanalamin na ako minsan? Ipapakit kayo ngayon sa salam. Appreciate yourself. Di ba? Mananalamin eh. You are unique. You are God's creation. Hindi masama yun. Let's appreciate ourselves. Because if we don't appreciate ourselves, nagigit ay ungrateful to the Lord that created us. Psalm 139 verses 14 to 15. Sabi ni David the Lord, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. I believe that David did not look perfect and probably he had a lot of deficiencies himself. But he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You were there. My frame was not hidden from you. And if you knew about me and you allowed me to be made this way, then it must be right. Because you don't commit mistakes. Kumisa lang yung standards natin, iba sa standard ni Lord. Let the Lord's standard be our standard. Appreciate yourself. Huwag naman kayong maging, magkaroon ng eye sickness. Na puro eye, eye, eye na lang, no? Now, good morning myself. Hello myself. I love you myself. Iba na yan. But appreciate yourself. Huwag na lang laging, kasi pangit naman ako eh. Kasi bobo naman ako. Kasi ganito ako. Yung bang lagi nating minamalit ang sarili natin. No. Don't be ungrateful to the God that created you. You are unique. And of course, another way to solve this insecurity, focus your life on Christ. Focus your life on service. Let's focus our lives on holiness. Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng insecurity because we focus ourselves on us. We focus our attention on us. Nakikita tuloy natin lahat ng kulang, lahat ng parang mali, lahat ng mga imperfections, then we become insecure. Focus on the future. Look forward. Most insecurity comes from the past. A past that cannot be retrieved. A past that cannot return. A past that is lost forever. Kalimutan na yan. Look up to the Lord and look up to the future. Kaya ang sabi ni Paul, Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. So, hindi ko na tinitingnan niyang past. So, nalimutan ko na yan. Hindi may ako nakatingin sa future kay Lord at sa mga ibibigay niya sa akin mga reward sa mga darating pang mga missions hindi ko na kinaalala yung mga naging mistake ko noon I learned from them and I forget about them but I look forward to the many churches that still have to be uh, developed I look forward to the many souls that still have to be saved I look forward to that wonderful service alam nyo kung tayo service oriented we will not be very insecure pero yung mga tao na vain laging sarili ang iniisip yan ang mga nagiging insecure when you are busy about the needs of others, you forget your own. And it has therapeutic effects. Sabi ng Colossians 3.2, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Brother and sister, you and I have insecurities. But let us forget that no one is perfect. No one has a perfect past. We all have deficiencies. And probably many of us have skeletons in the closet. Mga lihim sa buhay na ikinakatakot natin na mabunyag. Kung tapos na, tapos na. If God can forget, why can we not? If God can forgive us, why can we not forgive ourselves and others? 
one thing is sure, Jesus Christ is perfect. And we can put on His perfection as much as we can put on His holiness. When God looks at us, He sees the blood of Christ and He says, Perfect, beautiful, holy, saint. Because we hide behind the blood of Jesus Christ. Any born again Christian that has Christ in his heart is perfect. Not because of his own accomplishment, but because of what Christ accomplished on the cross for us. Live as perfect people. Perfect legally in the eyes of God. And then, when we come face to face with God, we will assume full, actual perfection through Christ's ministry. Forget your insecurities. And why? Because Christ is our security. You are standing on the rock, the rock of all the ages. Sabi sa Matthew, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Everything will rise and fall. Armies will march and die. Parliaments will sit and close. Monarchs will rule and be changed. But the rock of the Lord, the church, and the name of Jesus Christ will abide forever and ever. And you are standing on that rock. How dare you become insecure? Realize who you are. Realize who God is. And forget about this. Drive away the thief that robs you of happiness. Cast insecurity out of your window and never welcome it again. As we ponder the words of the Lord, let's just be quiet before the Lord. Each of us, kung meron sa ating may mga insecurities, all kinds of insecurities that we have mentioned, or probably insecurities that was not mentioned, but is unique to you, I want you to come to the Lord now. Ask Him to fill your heart so that He may fill the insecurities that pertain to our body, our mind, our heart, and our spirit. God is Jehovah Shammah. He is there in your heart. He is here with us. Come to Him. Submit that insecurity to the Lord. Be free today from that insecurity and start to enjoy a better life. See more colors in the rainbow. Celebrate life. Be free from this thief. Let's be alone with God for a while and ask Him to fill us. And to those of you that would say to the Lord this very minute, Lord, I have insecurities. I like to give them to you. I like to submit them to you. I don't want them anymore. Take over, Lord. Take it away from my heart and replace it with your love. Those of you that would like to be touched by the Lord, we will pray together. Rise where you are and declare your dependence on the Lord. We will ask the Lord to touch us very specially. Let the Lord release us from bondage to insecurity. The Lord said that I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Let the Lord touch you. Oh Father, we are standing before you, men and women of your creation, with insecurities that were imprinted in our hearts and minds because of our experiences in the past and our fears concerning the future. We know, O Lord, that you are a God that fills heaven and earth with your presence. You are omnipotent. You are powerful. You are all-powerful. There is no need, there is no deficiency, there is no insecurity in our hearts of beyond your power to cure and beyond your grace to replace with love and security. Father, you remember that we are dust. And we remember you as our God. We have no other God to go to but you. We have no other God to lean on but you. We have no other God to depend on but you. And so right now we declare to you, O Lord, our complete, our total, our unconditional surrender and dependence. You know the needs of each one. You are in our hearts. You are everywhere, O Lord. Your eyes sweep the face of the earth. Touch us today. 
Set us free, O Lord. Set me free, O Lord. Each one of us. From all insecurities. So that we may be bubbling with life. So that we may live to the fullest. So that we can give of ourselves without reservations. And that we can receive the foremost blessings from you and from other people as well. Let this day be a watershed, a turning point in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we cast away our insecurities and replace it with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, with the security of the Holy Spirit, with the beauty of God our Creator. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for being a loving God. Thank you for being there to secure us. Thank you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' name.